Party. Right, eh, let's have a look at the next event from Albion Park. Of the cup. Is it still the young or the old? It's kind of back to the logic. Last year in the junior free-for-all, he won easily on cup day. Then he went out and took on all these horses, the cup horses, and the uh, feature free-for-all on show day and absolutely killed them. He's 12 months on. Going into last year's free-for-all, Mark Purden was a wee bit weirder since he thought he might have thrown him in the deep end. He delivered. He finds a couple or three links on race day and always delivers. Young Rufus is my number one selection. He's my top three selections. How about you guys with uh, probably 30 seconds to go until official start time? I'm going Young Rufus to beat Yule Star. I can't work out whether he's right or not, but I think he is a class two-mile horse and he'll be driven to perfection. So eight to beat 12 and gracious night at 11.50 the great swoopers chance in the race. I've got young Rufus on top because he is everything that you want on a racehorse. He's the perfect racehorse to beat Stars and Stripes. I think he's got the brilliance. And for me, gracious night for third. Good luck to all the connections. Well, the crowd's in. The pitches are locked in over Australasia. We're about to get to the New Zealand National Anthem, which is about to start right on post time. Rion's going to call his 32nd New Zealand Cup. We'll just get his thoughts on the great race for 2002 prior to the National Anthem. Well, it'll be a stunning race. There's no doubt about that. Uh, young Rufus looks a picture. I thought Disprove looks a million dollars. He looked uh, wonderful at Kaikoura, but he looks well today. Uh, Yule Star, Stars and Stripes, anything can win this race. And it's going to be luck in the running. They've run in, they run into the Southerly three times in this race. So some horse is going to have to uh, brave the wind. And, uh, of course, it'll be a great race. But in the meantime, the national anthem just being sung at a bird cage now. <laughs> God of nations at thy feet, in the bonds of love we meet, hear our voices we entreat, God defend our With that, let's get it on. Bang your gong for the Canterbury Draft New Zealand Trotting Cup of 2002. The lead-up races have been run and won. The final preparations have been made by the trainers and the connections and the drivers for the great race, New Zealand's premier of premier races. And now it's down to probably four minutes on the track to see who the best open-class harness racer in Australasia is on this day, the second Tuesday of November. Young Rufus is the favourite at $2.50 and $1.60. He has been all the rage since he stepped out on the track here at Addington Raceway a month ago in his first up run for the season and ran fourth and then topped it off for the win in the Ashburton Flying Stakes, one of the key lead-up races to this cup. Jack Mulcahy has got the job to start the race, which has been, Mick, difficult to start, most times out of ten in the last few it's years. It's been a debacle the last couple of years, but Jack has the chance here to get them away. Many good standing start horses here. Let's hope for, and I think we'll see, a clean start. Swinging in, here's Rion's call of the 2002 Wonder Race, the New Zealand Trotting Cup. Disprove takes its place in barrier one. City Road, Panky's Pacer. At Old Bomber about to come up. Pocket Me comes in number four. At Old Bomber just in behind them. Yule Star's drawn the outside of the front line. Holmes DG back on 10 metres. Young Rufus the favourite. Come on, Alan, what are you doing? So they're ready. They're racing. Canterbury Draft New Zealand Cup is underway and Panky's Pacer galloped at the start. Pocket B the first start. Disproves away well. Stars and Stripes out quickly. 
Yule Star, in fact, the non verba began well, and Young Rufus in trouble. Young Rufus going back, he took a little while to settle into gear, and he's managed to get down, but he's now towards the back end of the field with Panky's pacer. So at the end of the first 250 metres, going to the front pocket, me from Stars and Stripes, fact, the non verba, Yule Star. City Rogues back at about two to three lengths in fifth spot. Eastwood jaunty the outside, disproved back in the inner. Shorty's girl and at old bomber, followed by Holmes DG, made a great beginning from 10 metres. Gracious Knight does, followed by Franco, where young Rufus picked me pockets and Panky's pacer. They stream into the straight the first time and pocket me's in front by about a length and a half. David Butt calls the tune from Stars and Stripes. Fact and on Verba lying third, you'll star fourth, followed by Eastwood Jaunty and City Rogue together, disproved back on the inside of Shorty's girl at the winning post, two laps to go. They were followed by Holmes DG about the middle of the field. At Old Bombers on, it's in a gracious night, a length and a half away. Out of the two back behind those runners now as they head into the back, they were followed by Franco Ware. Young Rufus only two behind it, and that's Panky's pacer and Pick Me Pockets. Into the back they run, and the speed's on and going around Facton on Verber and Robbie Holmes. They're going to drive and brave the southerly down the back the second time. Facton on Verber by two lengths now. From Pocket Me, Stars and Stripes is third, a gap of two to Yule Star. City Rogue is next and going up on the outside eastward jaunty followed by Shorty's Girl. Disproved back on the inside in the middle of the field followed by Holmes DG on the outside of Atoll Bomber. Gracious Knight a length away. Franco is two back. Uh, young Rufus follows that. Panky's pacer back on the inside and pick me pockets out of the back. They run. They get to the halfway mark and Facton on Verba at the 1600 metres by three lengths now. Facton on Verba leads the Canterbury Draft New Zealand Cup field round the turn to the straight. It's followed in second spot by Pocket B, sitting Park Stars and Stripes. Ken Barron didn't want to get trapped away in the inside and get pushed back. Moves up on the outside, followed by City Road, now three deep along the markers. Yule Stars beautifully placed, about to come out and go forward though. Here comes Holmes DG, Barry Purden around the outside, follows Yule Star. They were followed by Eastwood, Geordie the centre and Young Rufus making a big midfield run. They race their way past the winning post the last lap, disproved back in the inside side. Wider out, pick me pockets, then came Shorty's girl. At old bomber, Franco Weir, gracious night and Panky's pace are a thousand metres left. End of the back goes Facton on Verber and Holmes DG's attacking him. It's Facton on Verber, Holmes DG only a length away now. Followed then by pocket me, the inside Yule Star and Young Rufus out three wide goes up to join the leaders facing the breeze, 800 to go. Pick me pockets has got handy. They were followed by Stars and Stripes losing its place. Franco Ear outside it. City Rogue back on the inside. Gracious Knight around it. Then came Shorty's girl eastward. Geordie disprove. And at old bomber and dropping out. Panky's pace up pulling out of the race. Out of the back straight they run. 500 left. Facton on Verba. Turns the last bend in front by about a length and a half. Young Rufus not far away as he got it. And right with him. Pick me pockets is followed then and behind them by Holmes DG. Going backwards is pocket me. Can't see out the distance, followed by Yule Star in the centre, wider out Franco Weir and Gracious Knight coming into it as well but round the bend they come Fact and on Verba, Young Rufus can't see it out, and back on the inside, Holmes DG and Gracious Knight down the outside, and Shorty's girl coming from the back with a late run, Gracious Knight gets to the lead, Fact and on Verba, Shorty's girl but Gracious Knight wins the 2002 Canterbury Draft New Zealand Cup, Gracious Knight Fact and on Verba, Shorty's girl Holmes DG, Stars and Stripes, Yule Star. Young Rufus followed by Disprove. After those, Eastwood Jaunty. Then came Atoll Bomber, Pick Me Pockets, Franco Weir with gaps to Pocket Me and City Rogue. And Panky's Pacer has pulled out of the race. Wonder whether anyone's got tickets in the trifecta here. 14, 16, 15, and Gracious Knight has landed some pretty good bets at long odds over Facton on Verba and Shorty's Girl. They're moving up at Albion Park. Race number three, winning Grin is the favour, 2.10, over Rupta, as we stand by for the all-clear. Now at Cessnock, runners have arrived at the barrier. They're moving up.